we get started. For several years, I've been part of the CVCRM community, and I've always spent a lot of time talking to people around me about, um, you know, what's it like now that you're using CV, or what did it take to kind of get it on board? And I actually did um, kind of look at a presentation that I was done in DC, I think, in October, which inspired me to bring this one to life. And I just love the idea of um, kind of the storytelling piece. Uh, I think everybody who's a seeker, a switcher, a supporter of CIVI, you know, uh, would get inspired by uh, some of the stories that you're about to hear. Um, so it's an, you know, it's an open conversation that we're all going to have. There's a few scripted questions that we're going to follow, um, but we'll just try and make it cozy, friendly, and informative and inspiring. Um, so just a little bit about me. Oh, actually, I was going to start off by reading a quote, um, which somewhat connects to our work and somewhat connects to Earth Day, which we celebrated yesterday. Um, if the success or failure of this planet and human beings depended on how I am and what I do, how would I be? What would I do? So that came from my friend and your friend, Bucky Fuller. Um, so just to repeat a little bit, my name's Neil. I'm um, a founding resident of a co-housing community in the Bay Area. I'm a long time, uh, seven plus years, I think now, CIVI CRM ambassador. And last year joined and was very welcomed in the CIVI desk family. And my role is to, I get to continue being an ambassador, but I also get to focus on kind of being an account manager in the Western states. Um, I think that's about it. I think we'll kind of get launched. So how about if we just do some quick introductions and then we'll kind of start off with our, our questions. Uh, hi, my name is Nicole. I am the executive director of a nonprofit that is based in Denver. It's called the Colorado Foundation for Water Education. So we run programs, um, if you are not from here, maybe you don't know, this is a very arid state with a lot of people in it. So we have a lot of challenges with water supply in Colorado. And so we were created about 14 years ago in order to educate um, the citizens of the state about the water issues in the state. So we have a team of six people in our office. Um, we have a budget of about $600,000 and we've been using CIVI CRM as our main database and customer relations management tool for about five years. Okay, I am Adriana Harold and I am the systems administrator for the Museum Store Association. We are uh, a nonprofit membership-based association for uh, what we consider uh, cultural commerce that is mission-based. So it's, it's mission-based retailing. Um, we do education, uh, an annual conference and trade show. We are a staff of three. We support um, about 2,000 members. Um, and yeah. My name, excuse me, my name is Julie Crosby. I am the general manager at Democracy Now!, which is a nonprofit news hour. We've been using Civi CRM for about three to four years. Um, and that's about, that's about it, I guess. So why don't you hang on to the microphone there, Julian, just uh, take a tell, tell us a little bit about what, what, what life was like before Civi CRM. What, sure. what was kind of the state of things inside the organization? Yeah, so we, um, we had been using Excel and FileMaker primarily to track our contacts, and we had many different kinds of contacts. So we had um, people who were trying to get copies of our program or get uh, our merchandise through our, our website. Um, and so we were pulling that data from our credit card processor and storing it into a file and importing it into a FileMaker database. And so that was that was one big repository of donor data. Um, and then we had another FileMaker da database in which we would enter um, the check contributions that would be mailed into us. Um, and then we would also sort of track our foundation grants in that same database. And then we had departments who were all using various systems to keep track of their contacts. So those would be in Excel, um, and some of them would be in FileMaker. And so what was becoming unmanageable for us were things like, um, you know, being able to find a clear 
picture about a particular donor, say, because they might appear in multiple source, in, like in multiple databases, or um, you know, l losing contributions because did it come in through check? Did it come in through credit card? Which of these systems can I find it in? Um, I can't, I can't match it back. That sort of, that sort of issue. Um, and then, I think that basically we were also getting to. A, a size where it just wasn't manageable for us to have all these different systems going on. So I think that when we did our, when we started with Civi, we probably had about 100,000 contacts. And so it was just, un, it was unmanageable through anything other than a centralized system. Okay, great, thank you. Adriana, how about you? What was life like before Civi or what's just been the journey like so far? Sure, so we um, have just embarked on this journey. We're about four weeks in on our implementation of Civi. So, um, you know, four weeks ago, <laughs> and currently still, we are using a system called IMIS. It is from the company ASI, Advanced Solutions International. Um, my executive director likes to say it was the Cadillac of CRMs when we just need a Ford Focus. So <laughs> um, the capabilities in the old system, we were using like 5% of what it could do. We just didn't have a need there. Um, Civi is, was presented to us as a much simpler, yet still elegant and fully functioning system. Um, so before, before Civi, and you know, we're, we're still struggling um, <laughs> using this database that is currently not connected to our website, um, is not currently connected to our accounting system. So like Julie said, you know, we were dealing with silos, with information being in several different places. Um, with with Civi, um, we know that we can integrate all of these different things that we need to get done and accomplish um, into one place that will run with our website and um, just make our lives a lot easier. It will allow us to automate things that we had never been able to automate before. Um, it's, it's really, uh, our hope um, is that it's gonna make things simpler for us because things right now are not simple. <laughs> Say a little bit more about things that are not simple right now. Yeah. Me? Yeah. Um, well, you know, it's, uh, Maintaining, I, I do a lot of double entry right now. Um, we, we're a staff of three people, as I mentioned, um, and if something comes in through the website, that's all fine and well. It's we, we're currently running a WordPress website, so it's it's saving it there in that database. But I still need it in my current database that isn't hooked into anything else. So if I get a conference registration um, that comes in, that's go with membership. If I get a new membership that comes in on a paper form, I'm processing that through our current IMS database, but I am also going into the back end of WordPress and processing it there as well, so that they have user um, credentials and rights as a member to see member protected content and things like that. I'm double entering many things daily, um, you know, daily. <laughs> and that is, that is not simple. So that, that's an example of, of what I mean. Right now, um, we're, we're very short-staffed and, and I just don't have the time to be doing things two, three times to get one task accomplished. Um, so before we installed Civi CRM, we used a custom access database that was created probably in 2003. Um, by a prior executive director. And you know, for a startup nonprofit with two people, I, I was actually very impressed that we even had an access database. <laughs> so we started off, I think, on a you know, decent footing of, of sort of data management. And after I was there for about a year and a half, I just, I started to realize the limitations of that system. And frankly, I, I'm not a computer programmer. I don't really like digging around in the back end of an access database system. And in order to sort of pull the information that you needed in different formats, it was impossible. And so we, you know, it wasn't linked to our website donation, membership, or event registration processes. Those were all handled just like you by other pieces of software. So if somebody who had an event, which we have several a year, and 
you want to make sure that the access database has a record of that person's attendance, you have to then go and enter it separately. And so there was a lot of double entry, nothing was connected. Um, and it was just, you know, we were spending so much time doing data management that it just, it seemed like a waste. It was not efficient. So, you know, we had once a month, like a staff member would spend several days, like inputting all of the recent transactions into the access database. So the database itself was only really real time, like once a month. So we didn't have access to real time information because it sat in a bunch of other places before we would upload it into the database. And so that's one thing that we have now. Everything is real time. We know exactly to the, you know, to the minute the contributions that have come in. And that's been really helpful. Um, we have an email list of about four to 5,000 people. And when we did blast emails, this, and this was kind of back in the day before, you know, like constant contact. And I mean, none of that stuff existed seven or eight years ago. And so what we had to do is we would export all of the emails that were valid into an Excel spreadsheet. And then we would copy and paste them into an employee's Outlook and email it from there. But our server would only handle like 50 emails at a time, 50 email addresses in one email. And so we had somebody basically sitting there copying and pasting email addresses to send out a monthly e news <laughs> and it was it was ridiculous um, and so it just you know it takes it took so much time to accomplish these basic sort of data management and communication tasks um, and we have it's still not perfect by any means but the, the process <laughs> and the efficiency with implementing Civi has been has been really helpful okay wonderful thank you <laughs> so I guess one of the things that I'm also curious about now is and you, touch, you all touched a little bit on this. I'm just curious about, so now that you kind of made the decision to start exp the exploration, you know, what kind of things did you, were you being asked to look into? What did you experience yourselves as being you know, systems that you know, needed to be broken systems, systems that needed to be refreshed? I mean, you were kind of beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, what kind of things were you taking into account? Does that, does that make sense, Julie? <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. Um, I think that the the kind of light at the end of the tunnel stuff was, you know, being able to have uh, an overview of our, mainly of what our donors were doing. Um, and so, you know, being able to, to have a, a centralized place where all that um, lived was, some, was something everybody was on board with and wanted to happen. Um, and that the process of assessing how that would happen or determining how that would happen was actually quite lengthy because of the number of different um, sources of data that we had coming coming at us, like my like the other two panelists are saying. Um, and so I think that 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 process ended up being much longer than we expected to. Uh, we expected it to, and so but it also gave us a chance to really take inventory of what what were our touch points with our community and which ones were important to retain and which ones were sort of ephemeral and didn't necessarily um, warrant the, the effort to, to, to retain. Um, and so that, I think, going through the process of getting into CIVI gave us an opportunity to, to look at those relationships and sort of um, prioritize them and understand how each one needed to be treated. So I don't, I'm not sure if that exactly answers your question, but one perspective. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm kind of thinking, you know, what's, what's making life difficult, you know, like without something, what do you see as being something that's going to enhance, you know, the well-being of your organization by, you know, introducing a more mature, you know, robust tool? Yeah, I, could, I could say one, I'm, I'm sort of overlooking that probably the thing that ended up being most transformative for us, um, which was you know, we, did mail, we do mailings twice a year to our donor base. Um, I mean, not even to people who are donors, but to all of our contacts. And so the process of assembling that list used to be something that if we had a mailing in, um, that we were gonna put out in November, we would need to start working on that list in like July because we had to gather it from so many different places. And then we had to have, it was actually a volunteer for a long time who took all those various sources, put them together into one place, and then tried to do some normalization and, and, um, and deduplication in order to save us money on the mailing. We would still end up sending you know, five or six copies sometimes of an appeal to a donor 
which is obviously a terrible thing to do in terms of resources of an organization, but also in terms of donor relationships. Um, and we would do that work each year, and there was no way to retain the value of that work. It was a, it was a one-off process. You know, we would do it in 2009, and we would do it again in 2010, and we'd do it again in 2011, because we had no way to, to take the cleanup that we did on our various lists and get them and, and, re and, and retain it, like get it back into a centralized system. So I think that was, that was one of the primary needs that we could, everybody agreed was like, that we gotta find a better way to do this. Um, well, you know, we, we started with an assessment, kind of like you said, it, it's the prime opportunity to really look at your internal processes and determine what truly is a priority and what is important and what is less important and what doesn't matter at all. Um, so we, we started with brainstorming as, as a group what it was we truly were trying to do for our member base, what, what it truly was, what our value proposition was. And in order to deliver on that value, what are the things that we needed to know and, and how did we need to collect it in an effective and an efficient way to honor our, our value and our mission and, um, and the needs of our members. And so um, we actually started not even looking at where information was stored previously. We just started and said, this is what we need. This is, this is what we need, this is how we'd like to see it. And we built this, this big spreadsheet um, that said, you know, as far as member relations go, what do we need to do there? You know, as far as contributions and collecting money, how, how, what does that need to look like? Events, um, volunteer management, we just went down the row of what we needed to do uh, for our membership base. and based on that very first assessment, we were able to realize that, you know, we were doing a lot of things that just didn't need to be done at all. Um, there was no need to consider them <laughs> with moving to Civi. Um, and so that, that's kind of where we started, you know, as far as, as that goes. Um, I think one of, like you, one of the biggest positives to this whole thing is the syncing of our contact lists in various different places. And, um, you know, we use MailChimp as our, as our email marketing tool, um, but it's, it doesn't sync with the current database. It's, it is hooked into WordPress, but that's not really where I want that syncing either. So, um, you know, that, that is gonna be one of the, the <laughs> I think, brightest things uh, moving forward for us as well. So you highlighted the value of being a uh, Yeah, so when we, we went through this process what, six, six years ago or so um, of looking at kind of what are all the solutions that are out there and, and then we were doing a whole website redesign as well. We were basically, we're just, we trashed the website that we had and we totally started over with a different platform. Um, and so we were doing both things at the same time, which I actually think was really, it was a smart decision to do that because they're very well integrated now. Um, you know, the membership renewal process, the donor process, the email list sign up process, it's all very well integrated now in, with CVCRM and the front end, the user end of the website. Um, but back when I was sort of going through this process of looking at our, the solutions that were available, you know, there are a lot of like national sort of nonprofit support organizations that put out reports on here are the different databases that exist and here's who uses them and here's the pros and cons. And CVCRM was on very few of those five or six years ago. I don't know if that has changed because like, again, I haven't looked for a new solution. So I don't, you know, I'm not current on, it hasn't changed. Okay. Um, and, and it didn't, you know, it didn't rise to the top initially really at all, and I don't remember how I stumbled on it, um, but the thing that really resonated with me was that it wasn't just a CRM system. It wasn't just a donor sort of information system. It was a membership management tool. It was an event registration tool. It was a mass email tool. And there, 
at least back then, there were not very many solutions that integrated all of those things into one software package so that we didn't have to export the email list and put it into you know, MailChimp or Constant Contact. Um, and that was really appealing to me and it continues to work really well for us. Um, and it also came down to cost. You know, We are not, especially five, six years ago, we were not a big organization. We didn't even have an IT budget. We had a bunch of donated computers and a shared drive, and that was kind of that was kind of it. And um, and so, when I was looking at solutions, you know, like everybody kind of drives you to Salesforce. And so when I was looking at Salesforce, the subscription model, when you have you know three people in the office who are going to use it, and then you plan on growing your staff, so all of a sudden you're like, we could have ten people needing to use it, and that's several hundred dollars a month. And and my and so my thought process was like, well, I would rather use something that's open source. And we pay somebody once in a while to maintain it and give us guidance and pay you know, more up front to set it up. But then over time, it's not a fixed cost. And I think there are some downsides to that model, which I can share a little bit later. But in, originally, when I was making that assessment, that was one of the real pros. Great. Thank you. So I think the other um, kind of phase, I'm kind of thinking about this in different phases and timelines. Um, I'm just curious about in addition to what you've said, I mean, in what way does kind of Civi help you get to where you have visioned, where you want to get going? All of you have kind of touched a little bit on some of the challenges and what, you know, what the house was like before, starting to think about getting things better. How, how does a tool like Civi or like just a general CRM kind of help you get to where you're trying to get to? Um, we'll just keep going with this pattern. Okay, <laughs> easy, less thinking. Um, so I think that some of the ways that Civi helped us get uh, where we wanted to be was by bringing different functions under one roof. So I mean, I, I we're kind of saying the same things over and over again in a certain way, but I'm going to go ahead and say them again. So, um, so you know, we had some some event management that we used to do in Excel sheets. Now it's in Civi, now it's attached to these contacts who are people that, are, that have a relationship with our organization. Um, we have automated, we had the, the possibility of automated processes in a lot of places where we had manual processes in place before. So now instead of having to dedicate staff time to um, exporting, uh, order information out of our website and then importing it into our FileMaker database, you know, now we have a cron job that, um, you know, takes a SQL dump from the website every night and just sucks it into Civi and puts them, you know, puts them in with all the rest of the donors and contributions and gives us a way to, to find those particular contributions. Um, we had a way, we, we, gained ways of being able to describe our, our contacts. Um, so using tags, using groups, we were able to have a more nuanced view of these people who cared about our organization and who were financially supporting our organization. Um, we had ways of, we had, to a certain degree, we had some ways of identifying duplicates within our, within these populations, which will always be a thing. Like you're never gonna not be dealing with duplicates. So it was nice to have some tools to be able to deal with those, um, or at least identify them and understand sort of the scale of your duplicate problem. Um, I think that we had ways to report on things that we had never had before, apart from taking an Excel sheet and then making a chart in Excel or something like that. We had a way to sort of programmatically say how much, um, you know, how much money had come in during a period of time or how many how many donors had been added to our system over a period of time, um, or how many pledges we had outstanding. Um, so those, I mean, these are all some of the ways that I think Civi um, helped us move forward in terms of our, our relationship with our community and our, our fundraising in particular. Can you share more a little bit about uh, just the inter well, internal and external impact, like financial benefits, staffing you know, benefits, just I think impact and yeah, share what sure. comes up. Um, so like a recent impact would be that because we, because all of our, our contribution and donor information is in one place, 
um, we could identify uh, people who hadn't contributed in a long time, um, and we could stop sending them mail, which saves thousands and thousands of dollars, basically. Um, that's, and that is something that could be done in a period of a few hours by our staff people, rather than having to look for somebody outside the organization to, who could go through um, our, da our data and tell us, you know, help us identify those people. Um, I think that the, this, it's obviously freed up staff time so that people who are working in fundraising can be more focused on actually building relationships and being strategic rather than doing exports and imports and then, you know, hunting down, right, like, uh, you know, hunting down the, the day when nobody was there to do the export and the import and we have like no record of those contributions or something like that. I mean, it reduces stress and it, you know, lets people focus on the higher level parts of their jobs and also gives management and the organization more of a sense that these numbers are, these numbers are real or these, um, these trends are, are real. Well, since since we aren't using it yet, <laughs> um, there is you know there are several aspects of what we do that I am hopeful it's going to make an impact there. Um, one of those areas is in our dues renewal process. So for for several years, um, even on the old website, we had um, allowed for folks to renew their annual membership online, but it was a totally fakey dummy form they filled out a form online i got an email <laughs> then i went into the back side of the database and i actually processed their renewal um, you know so civi <laughs> is going to help us actually have that be a real online process it's not going to be a a dummy form that's totally fake <laughs> the user doesn't know but I know when my email is, you know, <laughs> going crazy. And again, like you were talking about, it's just having that information real time, you know, because those emails when I'm getting, you know, 200 people renewing in a single week, um, that gets daunting and overwhelming. And um, so that is definitely one area where we can see improvement. Um, other areas would just be in our general donation. Um, you know, we, we have a scholarship fund that folks are able to donate to. We also take general donations for the association for us to continue our programs and things like that. And there's never really been a way to do that online. We can do that in person, um, you know, at an event or something. We can put it on the renewal form. Um, but again, it's, there was no donate here kind of button that would talk directly to our database or to our um, payment processing back then. We've since moved to PayPal and everything is fine as far as that goes. But, um, you know, some of those things where we were either putting up a front to the membership base that we were doing this thing this way that it really wasn't, or just not having that capability at all, um, Civi is really going to come in and allow us to start doing some of those things for real. So, um, so not to be redundant, I'm going to basically just say what Julie said <laughs> is totally correct. And yeah, and the only thing I would add is um, the ability to segment lists for fundraising purposes and for email purposas. We didn't, and in fact, we still haven't totally figured that out. We're still working on it because understanding who people are just beyond, oh, they gave last year, or they work for this organization, or oh, I know that person's a lawyer, so we're gonna check lawyer. You know, gathering the sort of beta on people is, is difficult. Um, so we're still working on ways to figure that out. But even being able to send, you know, a save the date for a conference and send two versions. You know, one version goes to the people that went last year, and then one version goes to the people who have never gone. And even the ability to be able to segment your list in that sort of a basic way has been really, really helpful. And, um, and Civi makes it very easy to, to do that. OK, this one, I, I, we all have it on our sheets, but I'm really see if I can try and get it a little bit crisper. So we all know there's a huge community that kind of makes Civi what it is. Is there something about 
have you had an experience or what experiences have you had with the city community or what you're aware of that its mission is that kind of had you consider it, decide upon it, just something a little bit about that. I'm just curious to have us hear what, to what extent did that influence uh, a decision? Um, so I think that what, you know, for us going into this process, um, we, uh, we already kind of had a commitment to, to open source software. Um, and so Civi was, that's why Civi was on our radar, basically. That's why we didn't, we didn't like find out about it from, um, from any of the resources that are out there about referring nonprofits to various CRM choices. We had, we had heard, we had heard about it, um, from our open source friends, basically. And so that, and that was a big determining factor for us. We wanted to, we wanted control over our data for one thing. Um, we didn't want to be strapped into a system where um, there could be potential uh, data breaches even, potentially, you know, potentially we're very, our, a lot of our supporters are very privacy oriented. So using um, software like Civi and uh, along with the right kind of hosting, we felt like we could really protect our, the, the information of our donors. Um, and that was a big mission fit for us basically. Uh, and then I think that apart from, apart from that, Civi appealed to us because we knew that even if it didn't meet all of our needs, at least there was this, this community and this relatively active development that was going on so that, you know, if there were things that didn't, that weren't happening when we adopted it, then, you know, maybe we could, we could identify something and help, help make it be or maybe somebody else would would bring something forward that would help meet our need, and so it felt more um, alive in that way, and had and had more potential to maybe do some of our weirdo things, mm -hmm. um, and that I think some of our workflows we just would have had to change them in order to get them to um, go into the CRM that we were using, whereas we were able to. Um, make some changes to Civi to support workflows that were comfortable for our staff already, comfortable and established for our staff. Um, so our decision to go with Civi was a little, it was, it was a journey uh, for sure. We knew that we didn't want to stick with where we were um, for a number of reasons. Um, you know, like I said previously, we just, it was, the, the system was just way too big for us to begin with, which hand in hand goes with cost. It was incredibly expensive. Um, the system we were using before an annual renewal, um, you know, was close to $20,000. It, it was, it was crazy. Um, and so that was a huge part of, of our decision making process. Um, the original team of people that was looking at this, um, we set up a whole metrics with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different um, CRM systems that we compared modules and functionality across seven different um, CRMs. Civi was not a part of that initial review. Um, what the team came up with was that Salesforce was really going to be the system for us. Um, we, like I've mentioned, we're, are a staff of three people. Um, we have an IT contractor who comes in once a month to handle our desktop stuff, maintain our servers, things like that. And in another lifetime, he had worked in the nonprofit school industry, and he had used Civi many years ago previously. And so, you know, I was not super sold on Salesforce. I was thinking, why are we moving from a Cadillac to an Acura? I don't understand like why we're doing the same thing here. And so he, you know, very gently and very politically said, maybe we should do a comparison between Civi and Salesforce. And so we did. And that is where we came up with, you know, a 10 point comparison that Civi came out on top in every aspect that we were looking at and needs fulfillment and simplicity, um, and then, of course, the bottom line. 
So that, that is kind of how our decision evolved. We made this decision so long ago, I don't really remember. Um, I mean, I will say that the idea of open source software resonated with me, but the downside to that obviously is the lack of sort of consistent support. Um, and, and we struggle with that still today. Um, but just the concept of, you know, there's a community of people all over the world that's sort of building this. If you need something special done, it's not that hard to find somebody to go do it. It's very customizable. I mean, all of that really resonated with me in terms of it just being a flexible solution for us. Um, we have not interacted, frankly, all that much with the CiviCRM community or other users at all. I asked Neil if he knew how many users there were in Colorado, and there, I don't think there's an easy answer for that because you're not really you're not required to pay dues. You're not required to set you know send your send, put your email in somewhere. So there's really no way to know who's using it. Um, it would actually be, and I know CiviDesk is doing some of this through a lot of their um, either the courses that they're putting together, but to have a community of users would be really great. Great, thank you. Yeah, we can share some more information with you later. We, we've been talking during conference about some new metrics that are kind of surfacing, which might be of value to all of you. So let's shift a little bit just in closing, um, and also I'd like to kind of give some time for any questions that folks in the audience might have of us, of you. Um, just talk a little bit about the financial side of things, like what, how, what part did you play in that? What kind of conversations, you know, are you aware of that were had? Just around what it took to make the financial side work. Um, so I think that the one of the appeals of Civi was not having a monthly, like a, some kind of monthly or annual fee that we had to pay um, in order to use uh, to use the software. Um, but I would say that it cost us quite a bit more than we expected to get Civi working. Um, even basically how we needed to. So I think that that's, that's just a good thing to, if you're looking at Civi to, under, to understand that you're gonna, I, you know, I haven't actually spoken to a lot of other users, so I'm not sure how complex our, um, our case is compared to others, but um, we spent a lot of money and a lot of time getting up and running with Civi. So that was, that was a surprise to, a lot of people in our organization, and it was something that um, that was a little bit difficult to manage. I think for the people who are kind of advocating for for the implementation of Civi, um, how to get that, how to get an accurate or realistic budget is um, is tricky. I think that what you want to do is you want to make sure that you if you if you do something like an RFP, get get proposals from a number of different providers potentially to, to be able to compare them and identify if there are big gaps between one or the other. Um, expect to spend more money than you can, than you foresee on the data import process and any data cleaning that might be happening before your import takes place. Um, ask really frank questions about that with wh whomever you're going to be working with to do your your civi crm implementation um, get it make sure that they really understand your data sets before they give you any numbers about that sort of thing um, but then you know once you put in this upfront cost then you kind of you have you can have very minimal costs going forward if you don't make a lot of feature changes um, but you will have an ongoing cost to stay up to date with um, with Civi and whatever, whether you're using Drupal or Joomla or WordPress, keeping those systems up to date as well. So don't forget that when you're doing your budgeting, because um, that that can be that can be a surprise for people too. I think who see Civi as like, oh, you just pay up front and then you have the system and it just works. No, there there will be an ongoing cost. It just it is unlikely to be as high as it is for a lot of the proprietary systems. 100% true, <laughs> all of it. Um, it definitely, um, in the planning stages, I would say, you know, we, we were paying a lot um, in an annual renewal for our, um, you know, 
at the time, we were a larger staff, so we were paying for 10 licenses uh, for the system we had been using. Um, so up front, yes, you're, you're going to have to find people to do your implementation unless you have somebody on staff, but if your organizations are anything like ours are, um, you don't have <laughs> the in-house staff to do this kind of thing. So um, I would say I have learned that um, immediately discarding anybody who comes in at an hourly rate <laughs> is wise. You definitely want somebody to come in um, with a project uh, flat rate type of thing. And then absolutely, you, you for, for the sake of your own sanity, and your budget should automatically increase that um, at least somewhat, both in time and money, um, just so that you aren't caught a few months down the road going, oh, no. <laughs> but um, overall, the costs that it has been for us up front, um, we're still going to make it out at the end of this, including all of our WordPress plugins and support and all of that, we're still going to end up paying less in 2015 than we would have for a renewal on our old system. Because we rolled this up into a total website <laughs> redesign and relaunching, I don't actually, I don't know what portion of that was the city, the, the data cleanup and the city installation. It was five or six years ago. But um, what I can speak to is um, is something that, that Julie alluded to, which is y you invest a bunch up front and then you just sort of leave it, right? And it hums along and it works and everything's fine and it's great. And, and then what has happened to us is that things start to not work. Like something gets changed, something gets broken. We're not exactly, we don't know how to fix it. And that just stuff, that stuff accumulates over time. And so all of a sudden it's like, you know, we can't export zip codes anymore. <laughs> I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> and so you get to the point, yeah, you guess not helpful. So you get to the point where enough stuff goes wrong and it's not working that you're like, all right, we got to hire somebody to fix this. Um, and when we did that, we, so we did that last year. We spent probably about $7,000 last year on upgrading our Joomla back end because in order to put in the latest version of Civiserium, we had to upgrade our Joomla and then the latest version of Civiserium, and then a bunch of other customizations that we wanted to have done, um, as well as some stuff unrelated, website stuff that was unrelated to that. Um, and so what I have found is it's a balance between sort of, if it ain't broken, don't fix it, and then it is broken. <laughs> and, and then this idea of sort of keeping up with the latest releases and keeping up with the technology and you know, making sure that you're sort of on top of the fixes and, and there's a balance between those two things because you know we're not a big organization. We don't have dedicated software or IT staff. And I have to prioritize other things, right? I mean, I have, my desk is 20 years old. I, like, <laughs> and, and it's fine, but we, you know, when you're running a business, basically you have to sort of put your money where it's most needed and there generally isn't a lot of money to just say like, oh, well, we're gonna upgrade Civi because there's a new version. It's like, well, what's in the new version? Do we really need it? And three years goes by, and then all of a sudden you have to put a bunch of money in to upgrade it rather than, you know, sort of doing a little bit. And so, so it's a balance, and I think it's a management style thing. It's a personality trait maybe of mine to just let stuff fester <laughs> until, it, until it's broken. Um, so, so I think but when you think about budgeting it, you know, if you aren't going to sort of have an annual budget then you need to understand that every probably three years or four years you're going to have to put a chunk of change in to keep it functional. Um, and that has been a good lesson for me. Great. Well, thank you all very much. Um, I was going to ask a couple other questions. Thank you for the preliminary clapping. Um, so is there anything that you wish you had said that you haven't said? Just nugget. Just, OK. Great. So um, yeah, I just want to spend a few more minutes. I think we've got about 10 minutes just to take questions from, from the audience. Did you have a change resistance implementing CV and using CV? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Um, I, think that there, I think that there was a general euphoria about everything being in one place, but um, a lot of a lot of uh, 
unhappiness about uh, the CIVI interface and the sort of the clunkiness of it and the, the slowness of it, um, which is also related to our hosting, which is not necessarily about CIVI. Um, so I think that there, there have been improvements to the UI, but I think people still have in their minds that this is sort of like clunky and doesn't, doesn't work the way that, you know, um, they expect software to work. So I think that, that, that I think that's sort of like an ongoing process of, you know, when you're onboarding new people into using the system, being sure to give them really good training and have good documentation. Um, but it's also about sort of actively seeking out what are the pain points for the staff who are using CIVI a lot and seeing if there is way to allocate budget to address those things. Um, but again, that will, it will be like, it will be a budgetary thing. Um, with her resounding yes, I would say no. <laughs> we, <clears throat> as an organization, had been under the direction of an executive director for about 30 years. Um, and she retired a couple of years ago. And so our organization has undergone so many changes in the past two years with the introduction of CIVI and a new website and all of that. We were just like, bring it on. What else can we take? <laughs> so yeah, with her resounding yes, mine is definitely a no. Small, but just to add one small thing. So the people that went through the transition with me, they're, they've all left. It, it, and it wasn't that hard, but what I find that is maybe a little bit different, but still challenging is, especially with fundraising staff, when they come in from other organizations, and especially from larger organizations, and they're used to using like Salesforce or Razor's Edge, or donor perfect, and then they come in and they're like, oh, what is this thing that you're using? And there's a lot of resistance, frankly, from fundraising staff to learning it because they see it as clunky and sort of not that sophisticated and um, you know, nobody else is using it. Why in the world are you guys using it? And then I, I will say the one huge downside to me for Civi is Civi Report. We do not use it because it's just, we haven't been able to figure it out. You have to be able, you have to be able to write code basically to use it and none of us do and it hasn't been prioritized to use it and so that's one of the gripes from the development staff is like I can't get basic reports out of this thing that I need and so that is one area that we're actually going to try to focus on in the next couple of years is developing much more sophisticated reporting systems because it's not it, it doesn't work that well kind of right out of the box. Okay, I'm tempted to comment on that, but we'll leave that for a future, <laughs> a future conversation because there's so much in the box already that should address what you want to be continued. I wanted to uh, hear more about uh, the comparison that you did between Civi and Salesforce because I hear a lot of uh, people who are considering Civi. Uh, that's also the kind of their the other thing that they're comparing it against. Sure. So the things that we looked at, I, I, I have our, our document here. Um, so the things we looked at were integrating the, the CRM into a website, both from a member perspective and an administrative perspective. Um, we looked at online membership engagement managed by the member themselves in their profiles, things like that. Uh, and, and I'm not kidding when I say that on every single one of these points, Civi came out on top for our specific needs. Um, our forum, our discussion forum, it was going to be easier for us to implement a new, <coughs> excuse me, discussion forum with Civi and WordPress is what we use, then Salesforce um, event management was, we, so Civi is hooked into our WordPress and WordPress is then running a, a simple press plugin for the, now with with Salesforce, no, but with Salesforce, that, that w it was gonna be a custom build for tons and tons of money to create the kind of forum that we wanted, that we needed with the reply capabilities and the different groups and stuff like that. It was not gonna be something that Salesforce was able to do uh, out of any box. It was gonna be a completely custom thing uh, for the forum. But event management, um, having an online store, having products that are able to be sold, um, learning management, 
Um, Salesforce had an app that could do it, but there's an extension in Civi for learning management. Um, fundraising, friend raising, member get a member type of campaigns, things like that. Um, volunteer management, chapter integration. We have eight regional chapters um, and we do event management for them. Um, so that was way, it was just clear to see that Civi was the way to go. Um, there were some points like integration with QuickBooks. Absolutely, Salesforce does that. But it can happen with Civi as well. So there were some things where it was kind of a draw, um, but there was enough um, coming straight through Civi that it just made it pretty clear that Salesforce was, again, going to be too expensive um, and we could get everything done and in some cases done more easily with Civi. Um, you know, bulk email marketing. We use MailChimp, which we can tie in, um, but there's also the Civi Mail. And Salesforce, it, it was just a, a way bigger beast, you know, for us. So those were kind of the things um, that, we, that we looked at. Um, having library, resource libraries, uh, having a, a classified section. Um, Salesforce and Civi both couldn't do that, but there's WordPress plugins that will do that. So, um, yeah, those those were those were some of the main things we looked at in that comparison between Civi and Salesforce. <laughs> Sounds like you did a very very thorough job. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was quite the undertaking. <laughs> so uh, once again, just thank you, Julie, Adriana, and Nicole. And uh, I just wanted to finish with just reminding us all that. Success stories are documented. A lot of them live on civicrm.org. CiviDesk has also created their own, and I imagine most uh, service providers have also documented success stories from some of their clients. So anyway, on that note, I want to thank everybody, and we'll, we'll call it done. <laughs>